All right, thanks for watching. And today we will calculate a very cool integral using a technique that Ramanujan discovered. And before I do the integral, I just wanna thank Philosophical Math for the idea. I found this idea on his blog and you should read his blog. It's really, really cool. So which integral am I evaluating today? This one, integral from zero to infinity of e of minus x cubed sine of x cubed dx. So a very complicated integral, which um, we'll be able to solve using this result from Ramanujan. And which result is it? Namely the following. Suppose f can be written sort of as a power series, but instead of x, we have minus x. So suppose f is the sum from zero to infinity of phi n over n factorial of minus x to the n, then it turns out the following integral, you can evaluate it very easily, namely m of f of s, and I believe that's called the Mellon transform or something, the following integral, namely the integral from zero to infinity of x to the s minus 1, f of x dx, is just the gamma function at s times phi of minus s. In other words, what does this say? If f has this power series-ish, okay, then um, you can easily evaluate integrals of f times basically any power of x, you know, and I'm not going to prove this, again, I don't quite know the proof, but uh, let's use it to calculate this integral. And you might say, well, how is that related to that? I don't see any powers of x. Well, turns out there is one once we use a u substitution. So step one, okay, let u be x cubed. Because in other words, we want to transform this x cubed to an x, and then it'll be easier. Then du is 3x squared dx, but we want dx, and you can write this dx is 1 third, uh, 1 over x squared, which just becomes u of minus 2 thirds du. And then the integral i just becomes 1 third times the integral from zero to infinity of e of minus u, sine of u, u to the minus two thirds du. And that's much better because uh, notice it does involve a power of u, namely u to the minus two thirds, and we'll be able to deal with that very easily in a second. And just in order to get rid of u's, if you want, let x be u, and then this integral just becomes integ one third integral from zero to infinity, e to the minus x, sine of x, x to the minus two third dx. Now, we want a power series, and so if you like, you can you know, find a power series of e to the minus x multiplied by the power series of sine of x, but that's way too complicated. Instead, let's just use complex exponentials. It'll be much easier that way. So consider the following integral. So step two. Consider, let's call it j, to just be the comple complexified integral. Integral from zero to infinity of e of minus x, e to the i x, x to the minus two-thirds dx. And the question is, how are i and j related? Remember, i was just the part with sine, j was the part with e to the i x, namely, i is just one-third, sorry, uh, yeah. We have this factor of one-third, so indeed i is one-third. I hope I won't forget it at the end one-third times the imaginary part of j. And speaking of which, as a corollary, we'll also find the integral of e to the minus x cosine of x. 
sorry, or I guess e to the minus x cubed cosine of x cubed dx using the same thing. Okay, that's very good because notice, first of all, you can also write this in, as follows. This is integral from zero to infinity, e to the minus x, uh, I guess minus x, one minus i, x to the minus two thirds, dx. And the reason this is nice is because remember we want f to have a nice power series. And indeed, this exponential term, which will be of f of x, will have a nice power series. Because what is the power series expansion of e to the z? It's simply sum from 0 to infinity of z to the n over n factorial. It's the n over n factorial, OK? <laughs> and this is valid for every z. And therefore, it's valid also for z being minus x times 1 minus i. So e to the minus z x times 1 minus i then just becomes sum from n from 0 to infinity of 1 minus i to the n over n factorial of minus x to the n. So I skipped a step. I just did minus x times 1 minus i to the nth power, which equals to this. And now, using this complex form, it's kind of ugly to um, evaluate this. However, turns out this argument here, you can write it very nicely in terms of complex exponential forms because what is this number 1 minus i? It's somewhere over here. Well, it corresponds to the angle minus pi over 2 and modulus square root of 2. So indeed, it is square root of 2 e to the minus i pi over 4 to the n over n factorial and minus x to the n. And you can just write this as sum from n from 0 to infinity of if you want 2 to the 1 half to the n, so 2 to the n over 2, e to the minus i n pi over 4 and minus x to the n over n factorial. Again, okay. then should have used pi n, but too late. Okay. Now, why is this nice? So again, this was our f of x. And notice what we did, we wrote f of x as a sort of a power series. We want to write f of x as sum from 0 to infinity of phi n over n factorial minus x to the n. And oh, that's precisely what we did. So in particular, what is this sucker? It's just phi n. So phi n is that, and then what is s? Again, we want x to the s minus 1, but we have minus 2 thirds. So we also have s minus 1 equals to minus 2 thirds, which means s is 1 third. So s is 1 third, phi n is this junk. So all we have to do now is to evaluate the integral, which will just be phi of one third, sorry, gamma of one third and phi of minus one third. So therefore, this is step three. It was at step three. Uh, step three, yeah. Okay, so step three, therefore, j, which is the integral from zero to infinity of x to the minus two thirds e to the minus x times one minus i dx is now equal to just gamma of one third and phi to the minus one third. Again, I just use the fact that s equals to one-third. And remember what our phi was, phi of n, 
was just 2 to the uh, n over 2 e to the minus i n pi over 4 and that's it. No n factorial because the n factorial is part of uh, uh, there, no, the uh, numerator. So technically the n is that. Okay, so all we need to do is plug it in. So this is just a gamma of one third and phi of minus one third, which then just becomes two to the minus one sixth e to the um, i pi over uh, 12. So again, oh, sorry, I forgot. To, yeah, well, n here is minus one third, so minus i n over 4 is e to the i pi over 12. Great! And now we calculated j, so all we need to do is calculate i, but remember, so last step, i was just one third times the imaginary part of j, but then, so this is real, this is real, this is just cosine of pi over 12 plus i sine of pi over 12. So this is just one third times gamma of one third, two to the minus one sixth sine of pi over 12. Okay. And we can clean this up just a little bit because remember there's one nice property of the gamma function which says z times gamma z is gamma of z plus one. So this just becomes gamma of four thirds, two to the minus one sixth, and sine of pi over two, over 12. And sine of pi over 12, you can uh, uh, calculate it using half angle formulas and stuff. And in the end, what you get is simply the integral from zero to infinity, e to the minus x cubed, sine of x cubed dx, is gamma of four thirds, two to the minus one sixth, sine of pi over 12. And the same thing with cosine. So integral of e of x cubed cosine of x cubed is the same thing, but cosine of pi over 12. How cool is that? And it's just based on this neat formula from Ramanujan. So thank you, Ramanujan. That's one of the awesome things you did. And thank you, philosophical math. That was a great result. I didn't know about it. All right, so if you like that and you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.